Hey everybody, this is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Uh, coming to you live with the research moment today. And uh, this month we've been talking about whiplash and whiplash associated disorders. Um, so today we're talking about a paper that came out of the Journal of Chiropractic and Osteopathy in 2007. Um, it is called the Post-Traumatic Upper Cervical Subluxation <clears throat> subluxation visualized by MRI a case report uh, so this was a, a really cool case very interesting and this is uh, something that we often see in our practice um, where a patient has been in a car accident or uh, you know someone calls in uh, has been in a car accident finds out about what we do and uh, you know they've been to ER, they've been to the kind of traditional, you know, going and getting checked out, and uh, they kind of come out with you know maybe some medic, maybe some muscle relaxers, maybe some you know painkillers, um, and you know some imaging, and not a whole lot of answers um, because nothing's really broken, uh, but uh, but they're in a lot of pain, and so that's where this story is really really uh, kind of interesting and cool. So uh, this, uh, this patient was a 21-year-old patient, uh, female, and so if you remember back the last couple of weeks, I've been talking about you know, whiplash and whiplash-associated disorders tend to show up more in the female population because of neck size and, and in accidents and injuries, it tends to you know, take more of a beating. Um, and so this young lady was in a car accident and she was struck, uh, so if, two cars, she was driving down the road and a truck was coming at her. She was going 45. He veered into her lane and struck her on the left-hand front side of her car at uh, 55 miles an hour. So if you take those two, the way uh, accident physics works is you take those two uh, energies and you actually add them. So 55 and 45. Uh, so that's a massive accident, uh, you know, 100 plus miles an hour, basically. Um, so a lot of energy there, and guess where it goes? It goes right through your car into you. Um, and in that uh, whiplash scenario, we have that, uh, that movement of the acceleration, deceleration of the cervical spine, and that's what happened with this young lady. Uh, and so she was actually knocked unconscious, and they, the rescuers found her on site, took her to the emergency room, and they did some imaging on her. She, you know, she came to, and uh, she was in extreme pain, head pain, neck pain, uh, numbness and tingling, and dizziness. Um, and they checked her out. They did a CT, they did an MRI, or no, they didn't do an MRI, they did an, uh, a CT and an X-ray uh, of her cervical spine and didn't find a lot going on. Um, and so basically they discharged her and said, you know, there's not a lot we can do. And uh, so go see a neurologist and they'll check you out. So next day she goes to the neurologist, the neurologist checks her out, puts her on some migraine medication, um, you know, it doesn't help her, uh, that migraine medication. And it's, you know, it's really only been a day, so, you know, uh, not a whole lot of change there, but uh, she goes into the, a chiropractor uh, two, two days after the accident. Um, and the chiropractor does a great job. And this is where, you know, a, a good chiropractor can really help is if you're, if you're, really you know, investigating the problem and really trying to get to the bottom of the problem, find out what's going on. Um, oftentimes there's, there's something going on in there that's, that's not quite right. And so what this uh, chiropractor did was he did an evaluation, um, you know, found that she was knocked unconscious, uh, she'd been to the yard, ER, done all this stuff, you know, and was having all this pain, why was it going on? So um, he, uh, he did some testing on her neck, found that she had decreased range of motion in her cervical spine. So the movement in her neck was not as smooth and, and even from right to left. And actually when she would tip her head back, she'd become very dizzy uh, and sick. And so that's, that's like a bling, that's kind of a, a light bulb. You know, there's something going on there. Um, <clears throat> and so what he did uh, was he ran a couple of neurological tests and uh, some, a couple of the tests were a little bit off. He had her do the Valsalva maneuver, um, uh, bear down, and uh, really build some pressure in her spine. And when she did, she had extreme pain in her neck and her head. And so he was like, okay, well, something's really going on here. Um, so he sent her out for a flexion, flexion extent, or took flexion extension films on her, uh, where uh, he took, you know, film like this, and then a film like this, 
and you get to see how the joints are moving in that uh, position. And, uh, and when he did that, he actually didn't find any problems. Uh, so then his brain went to, okay, well, maybe it's in the soft tissue in another way, and so let's do an MRI. So he sent her out for a, an MRI and found some big, big problems. Uh, so number one, he found a syrinx, which is basically a distraction injury of the, um, or can be a distraction injury of the um, uh, cervical spine. Uh, and so basically looks something like this, uh, which is this little white thing right here. And it, it actually stretched from C2 all the way up here, all the way down to C7. So basically her cervical spine, spinal cord was just taken and stretched like that in that split second injury. Um, and that's what happens in whiplash, big whiplash accident sometimes. Also found a myodural bridge in the, um, up there in the uh, uh, upper neck where the muscle actually attaches into the spinal cord right here. It's this little white band um, right there. And so what that does is when the muscles out here are really tight, which her muscles in her neck were really tight, uh, it just pulled on her uh, spinal cord here. And so she was in extreme head and, head and neck pain because of it. And so then, um, I think that's my fun pictures for the day. Um, and so then uh, what he did was he uh, also, oh, he also found uh, a lateral, left lateral translation of C1 of the top neck bone, which is kind of where we focus in the upper cervical spine, and found that that bone was kicked out hard and that actually the ligament that's supposed to hold it in place, the alar ligament, uh, that is called the check ligament because it checks lateral motion, it was actually blown uh, and, and uh, the ligament was not holding the bone in the right place anymore. So what he did was he analyzed and assessed and he came up with a way to correct her cervical spine, cervical spine up here gently uh, to realign the joints um, so that the nerves flow and, and everything starts to heal. So she was under care for six weeks and after six weeks she had a 75% symptomatic resolution where before when she came in she was in nine out of 10 pain. And after six weeks, she had reduced her symptoms 75%. And then after six months, she was 100% improved. Uh, and you know that's that's just the power of doing a little more you know in depth look and, and doing some some further investigating. Um, you know she had a, she had a lot going on, but uh, uh, they couldn't find it in the ER. And you know going and getting checked out by somebody that really knows the spine, really knows what's going on in there, can really help. So if you know of somebody that is suffering with similar types of problems, we're actually doing a talk on whiplash at the end of the month, September 27th from 6.30 to 8.30 at Atlanta Grill in Rye. Um, so, you know, here's our info, 603-380-9184. Uh, That's 603-380-9184. And uh, it's uh, at Atlanta Grill, dinner's on us. We'd love to have you. And uh, have a great day, everybody. Take care.